Welcome to our Wednesday devotion. I'm Pastor Tim Gerbing from Christ Lutheran Church in Pewaukee, Wisconsin. Today we listen to Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 to 6. As a prisoner for the Lord, then, I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. I remember visiting a person who was jailed in a remote town in Zambia. It wasn't pleasant for me. The jail cells had no bed, they had no sink or toilet, the floor was made of concrete, uh, the only furniture in that cell was a bucket in a corner that was used for the toilet. That very year, Amnesty International had listed Zambia as the worst violator of human rights abuses in the world, and I believe it. While I was waiting, I saw three prisoners who had their hands tied behind their backs. They were forced to sit cross-legged on the ground in front of the police station. An armed officer stood guard, and every once in a while he would scream at one of the prisoners, and then he would kick them with the black heavy boots that he was bearing, and he'd just laugh when they cried out in pain. And I remember thinking to myself, boy, I hope I never find myself a prisoner in a Zambian jail. When the Apostle Paul wrote his letter to the Ephesians, he was actually under arrest. He had suffered miserable imprisonments and cruel beatings. The idea of human rights, that wasn't even a thing back then. Now, knowing that, that Paul suffered as much as he did in his service to the Lord, that should make us listen very attentively to what he has to say to us. Because Paul wasn't some sharp-looking preacher, you know, wearing makeup with carefully placed video equipment, standing on a stage in front of bright lights, with hundreds of people in the audience, offering smooth talk and witty comments, promising otherworldly wisdom uh, to make people feel good about themselves. No, no Paul suffered. And while he was incarcerated, he wrote letters to Christians, letters meant for you and me, reminding us of our calling. Jesus chose us to belong to him through faith. He made that possible by the work of the Holy Spirit, who, in our baptism, gives us this faith. The anger of God, because of our sins, was averted by Jesus' suffering and death. His saving work was applied to us, to each and every baptized believer, so that now we all have received peace with God and, and love from God, and along with it, a sure and a certain hope of eternal life with him. Paul was called to not only proclaim this beautiful message of God's love, but he was also called to serve as a model of what we believers are called to do while we wait for the day when we finally enter the glories of heaven. And our call is simply this. It's to love. To live a loving life of humility and gentleness. Of patience and burden bearing. Even and especially when we suffer. When we're abused. When our rights are violated. When we've done nothing wrong. Why would we do this? Because that's the life that Jesus lived to save us. We have been given a new calling, a new purpose in life. And that purpose is to make the love of Jesus shine brilliantly in and through us. And what better way to make Christ's love obvious than when we suffer, especially when our suffering is not fair and it is unjust. Oh, dear Jesus, Thank you for suffering the way you did, and especially for suffering the wrath of your Father for our sins. Strengthen our faith and our trust in you, and unite us by your Spirit to encourage each other in these troubling times, and to remain committed to living a life of humble love for those you came to save. 
Amen.